grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Lovely to see you this morning. Welcome to our service for today. Um, I really do hope you've had a wonderful week. Uh, but whatever the week has brought for you, whether it's been a good week or a, or a difficult week, and I know for some it has, um, I pray that this would be a time of blessing for us as we come to gather uh, to bring ourselves before God and to and to worship Him. Um, I guess the first thing to say this morning is Happy Father's Day, especially for all the fathers uh, among us today. Thanks for being with us today. I don't know whether you've got anything special planned for the fathers among you, but whatever you're up to, and however you're marking the day in these unusual times, uh, I pray it would be a real blessing to you and to your family today. We begin very simply our service this morning by lighting a candle as we remember Jesus's constant presence with us. So thank you, Blake. We light this candle because Jesus is the light of the world. Thank you to Blake for lighting our candle and uh, to Poppy for assisting so ably. Just a couple of short news items for you this morning. Um, we're delighted to have the St John's building reopened during the day this week from um, nine in the morning to seven in the evening uh, for individual prayer. And it's been lovely to see people coming into the church building again and to just be able to, uh, to go and spend time there. Um, the other thing to say, of course, is that we're also very pleased to be able to offer funeral services in the church building again now. Um, and I really just wanted to say a big thanks to all those who have played a part in enabling uh, this gradual, this first phase of the reopening to happen, especially those who've been and spent time preparing the building um, and uh, cleaning the building each evening so that we can continue to offer this facility to our community. So thank you so much for that. Um, in terms of any other sorts of news on reopening for any other uh, forms of worship, we still await details from the government and from the central teams in the church that are working with the government on reopening plans. Uh, so there's nothing really much to say. Please continue to watch this space and we'll let you know as soon as we're able to. Um, the second thing just to share briefly is that we're equally delighted that our new uh, water connection into St John's uh, building is being installed by Seven Trent this week as part of our ongoing development plan. Um, that's going to happen on Wednesday. So please be aware that if you are planning on visiting the church building on Wednesday, um, that access to the car park and to uh, that area of the locks will be a little bit more restricted than normal. So you might want to plan on um, parking elsewhere and, uh, and walking if you, if you can. So with those two little bits of uh, news imparted, shall we just take a moment of quiet to uh, bring ourselves before God um, and share a prayer for Father's Day before we sing our first song. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, you entrusted your son Jesus, the child of Mary, to the care of Joseph, an earthly father. Bless all fathers as they care for their families. Give them strength and wisdom, tenderness and patience. Support them in the work they have to do, protecting those who look to them as we look to you for love and salvation through Jesus Christ, our rock and defender. Amen. Here is love, vast as the ocean, loving kindness as the flood. 
when the prince of life our ransom shed for us his precious blood who is love will not remember who can cease to sing his praise he can never be forgotten throughout his eternal mercy flowed a vast and gracious tide grace and love like mighty rivers poured in sin from above and hence peace and perfect justice kiss the guilty world in So our, our theme this morning is um, is do not be afraid. Uh, in a while, we're going to look at what Jesus and Paul said that might help us on this topic. And uh, Margaret is going to uh, speak to us. But to just get us thinking about this question, this week I invited uh, a number of people to tell me what they're afraid of. Uh, I got lots of responses, some more predictable than others and some deeper than others. But your very simple job here is just going to be to try to match the fear with the person. I'll show you some pictures of things people might be afraid of and a list of people, and you need to see if you can guess who has which fear. Okay, why don't you give it a go? Okay, how do you think you got on? Right, well, let's see. Here are the answers. Okay, I don't know how you did. I hope you got a few. Um, now that was just a little bit of fun, but as I said uh, earlier, in addition to the responses you've seen below, I had some slightly deeper responses, uh, which was lovely actually. Um, one in, partic in particular from Louise Bradshaw. Now you may know that Louise is currently undergoing chemotherapy treatment, and I've asked her if I can share 
with you all today a little bit of what she sent me because, well, firstly, because I know you'll want to know how Louise is, but also because I think it's a lovely reflection on this question, um, what are you afraid of? And when I asked that question, this is what Louise offered to me. I've always dreaded a cancer diagnosis and often wondered how I would cope with one if it should happen, as I've always found life to be enough of a struggle ordinarily. However, now it has happened, about six months ago. It's strange how you just have to deal with it and get on with it. It has made me more focused to live in the present moment, feeling less anxious generally and wanting to get on with things and not worry about the future as much. In these strange times for us all over the past three months, it's given me the opportunity to stop and pause a bit more than normal and process what's going on both in my life and the wider country and world. I often think about what my GP said to me on the 23rd of January this year when I went to see her to discuss my forthcoming treatment. And as I was leaving, I mentioned about the coronavirus threat, to which she replied, there's nothing to worry about. China's got it all under control. Really? I thought to myself. Okay then, but didn't say any more. In her own way, I think she was trying to reassure me. She's known me for a long time and knows I've struggled with anxiety and depression. And I had the chemotherapy coming up. I'm sure she was hoping and praying that there was no great threat and she wasn't alone in that thought back then. But I was afraid. Afraid of the unknown virus. Afraid of the cancer. And afraid of having to have chemotherapy throughout this time when my immunity would be low. That was five months ago now and my chemotherapy has started having been delayed in March due to another condition. And I feel that God has been with me throughout this whole time. And he has helped me, he has helped to reassure me and keep me calm throughout an experience that would have filled me with the deepest fear in more normal times. As my daughter said to me, it's like the whole world has been shielding with me. And I suppose that has helped me. I haven't felt like I'm missing out on too much and the lockdown has given me the time and quieter space that I needed to prepare and deal with the treatment. Following on from the wonderful reading from Romans last week, I have felt great comfort and reassurance from God during this time. I feel he's with me through this challenging time, through the suffering and the pain, and I feel a deeper connection and inner peace than I had previously, despite always having had a strong faith. What a wonderful reflection that is, and thank you, Louise, for being so honest and offering that to us this morning. Um, really, really helpful, thank you. So as we reflect on this question this morning of what we're afraid of, and more importantly, how we respond to that, Shall we sing another song together? Um, it's a song called One Thing Remains. Uh, and, and I realise it might be quite new to many of you, but I think it speaks so powerfully of this truth that God's outrageous, boundless love and grace never runs out or gives up, whatever might be going on in our lives. And it begins with these lines. Higher than the mountains that I face, stronger than the power of the grave, constant through the trial and the tra change, one thing remains. Your love never fails, it never gives up, it never runs out on me. Shall we sing?
So this morning we're actually going to have two um, Bible readings rather than our normal one. Both of them are read to us by the wonderful Akua Mola family. Our first reading is brought to us by Esther and comes from Matthew's Gospel. And then we're going to go straight into our second reading, which continues from where we left off last week in Paul's wonderful letter to the church in Rome. And it's brought to us by Samuel. After which, Margaret is going to bring us our sermon for today. Matthew 10, 29 to 31. Are not two sparrows sold for a copper coin, and not one of them falls to the ground, apart from your father's will? But the very hairs of your head are all numbered. Do not fear, therefore you are of more value than many sparrows. Romans 5, 12 to 17. Therefore, just as sin entered the world through one man, and death through sin, and in this way death came to all people because of sin. To be sure, sin was in the world before the law was given, but sin is not charged against anyone's account where there is no law. Nevertheless, death reigned from the time of Adam to the time of Moses, even over those who did not sin by breaking a command, as did Adam, who is a pattern of the one to come. But the gift is not like the trespass. For if the many die by the trespass of the one man, how much more did God's grace and the gift that came by the grace of the one man, Jesus Christ, overflow to the many? Nor can the gift of God be compared with the result of one man's sin. The judgment followed one sin and brought condemnation, but the gift followed many trespasses and brought justification. For if by the trespass of one man death reigned through that one man, how much more will those who receive God's abundant provision of grace and of the gift of righteousness reign in life through the one man, Jesus Christ. Good morning everybody and it's lovely to be with you again and thank you Esther and Samuel for the readings, thank you, you did really well. Isn't it interesting to know what people are afraid of? Thank you to all those who um, were honest enough or brave enough to share your fears. Especially thank you to Louise for sharing quite deeply some of your fears. Thank you. When Jesus says, don't be afraid, I'm sure he's not saying, come on, pull yourself together or mm, there's nothing to be afraid of. What are you worrying about? I think he's saying, I care about your fears I know, I understand your fears and you are precious to me. Look at the sparrows, they're cared for. How much more do I care for you? It's a lovely image, isn't it? A few weeks ago, um, a baby crow landed in our front garden. Bless him, <laughs> he um, couldn't fly at the time. He was quite small, he had lots of fluffy feathers. And he was in the corner of our garden and um, didn't seem to be able to get to any food or water. So we had the real privilege of being able to get really close to it. We were dripping water into its beak. He was opening its beak and letting us drip water in. And then we were feeding it with little mealworms and actually cat food. We discovered that um, baby crows eat or can eat cat food and give it some nutrition. So... We had a real joy, really, of caring for this little crow for a couple of days until um, until it disappeared. Hopefully it flew away safely. Um, have a little look. Just enjoy what we did.
And Jesus says, how much more precious are you? Lovely thought. I guess there are many fears though, aren't there, that attack us at times in our lives. Um, fear of pain, whether that's physical pain or emotional pain. If we've experienced pain one way or another, we're more likely to be fearful of it and to try and avoid it again, aren't we? Fear of judgment, especially if it's unjust judgment. Fear of being criticised, fear of being told, why are you so big or so small or so loud or so quiet or, you know, never get it right sort of thing. People quite understandably can feel fearful of those kind of judgments. Fear of failure um, and an expectation that you must never fail is a terrible burden to bear. Um, and no wonder people feel fearful of failure if they've had a bad experience of failure in the past. Fear of rejection, fear of exclusion, many reasons to be fearful in our lives, aren't there? And that can hurt us and can hinder us and can almost cripple us. Um, some fears help us to stay healthy and stay safe, don't they? Fear of busy traffic. Um, should help us to keep safe on the roads. Fear of the coronavirus can help us to keep safe from that awful, awful virus. But unhealthy fear can be crippling, paralysing almost, can't it? Causing a lack of joy or peace or security. I guess two of our biggest fears in life might be guilt and might be death. And Paul talks about both of these things in the reading that we've just heard. Guilt because of our awareness of things we've got wrong. Sin, to use an old fashioned word. Uh, things that we should have done that we shouldn't have done or things that we shouldn't have done that we should have done. Things that show we've not loved our neighbours as ourselves or things that show we haven't loved God with all of our hearts. And fear of death, especially if we don't have the security and certainty and faith in the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. It must be so difficult to face death, our own death or death of a loved one, if we're not comforted by the, the truth, the Christian faith of life beyond this grave, beyond this life. Well, here's the good news. Let me tell you some good news now. Um, there is a huge contrast that Paul talks about here in this amazing letter to the Romans. And so I'd like to just follow on from uh, what Steve shared last week so, so well um, about this amazing, staggering contrast between, yes, sin, guilt, and yes, fear of death, always been part of our human life, but, and a huge but with capital B-U-T, the gift of God is completely different. The gift is not comparable to the problem. There is a complete move, a complete shift from judgment and condemnation to a gift of grace. Overflowing, abundant grace. Both words that Paul uses in this letter. Jesus doesn't just simply mend our broken lives. He doesn't just put us together again. He does far, far more. Far, far more than just logic or a balanced view might give us to help us overcome our fears. Um, but a gift, a gift of amazing, outstanding, abundant grace. And more than that, it's more than just saying, here's a gift. Um, Paul is inviting us to receive a gift, to receive the gift of grace, 
and of God's love for each one of us. In these three verses, verses 15, 16 and 17, Paul refers to this gift four times. Here's just one of them. How much more will those who receive God's abundant provision of grace and the gift of being made right with God reign in life? What is grace? What is grace? What's it mean? Well, I've heard grace explained as God's riches at Christ's expense. A wonderful gift of grace, a gift to receive. I'd love us now to listen to a song which um, I first came across when I was training for ministry, um, I don't know, 15 years ago or so. Uh, it means a great deal and the words express the contrast between our needs, our fears, our pains and God's grif <laughs> grift? gift of amazing grace outstanding grace. So enjoy this song. There's a lot of pain but a lot more healing There's a lot of trouble but a lot more peace There's a lot of hate But a lot more love There's a lot of sin But a lot more grace Let's try that again from the top there's a lot of pain, but a lot more healing. There's a lot of trouble, but a lot more peace. There's a lot of pain, but a lot more love. A lot more grace, a lot more grace. Oh, how great is grace! Oh, how great is grace! Love unfurled by heaven's stand. Oh.
first one for the last time There's a lot of pain And there's a lot of pain But a lot more healing There's a lot of trouble But a lot more pain But a lot more love There's a lot of sin But a lot more grace Oh, a lot more grace Oh, a Outrageous grace, love unfurled by heaven's hand, through my Jesus I can stand. I can stand forgiven, free of fear. Will you receive this gift? I'd like to say a prayer now and if it's something you'd like to say also with me, please do join me in these words. Loving Father, I recognise the guilt that would rightly be mine if it wasn't for your love. Thank you for Jesus and his gift of grace that overflows to me in abundance. I receive your gift of grace, forgiveness and freedom from fear. I choose to live my life for you and with you. Amen. Please do talk to one of us if you prayed that prayer for the first time or if you prayed it before but um, are coming back, coming back to the goodness and the grace of Jesus. And now let's sing another song together about that amazing grace. Um, it's a celebration song. Let's enjoy singing it together. Oh 
my chains are gone I've been set free My God, my Savior has ransomed me And like a flood His mercy reigns Unending love Amazing grace My chains are prayers this morning are led by Arav, I'm delighted to say, uh, uh, which we will wrap up with the Lord's Prayer and then we'll lead into our final song. So shall we pray together this morning? Father God, we thank you for this wonderful day that you've given us and Lord we pray that you give us a lesson of the problem for you, Lord. Give us more days like this in the future, but we know you will because you always do, Lord. And we pray that we've been able to see this day and like and like millions of people in this world, Lord. We pray that for COVID-19, Lord, we pray that this virus shall go away, Lord, and all the all the pe the stuff that people have had to endure, all the family members that people have lost, all the fighting some people have had to do in hospital, all. All of the in all of the stuff they've had to endure, Lord, we pray that you shall be by their side. You shall bless every one of the, uh, us in this world, Lord. We pray that how however how much patience we've had during this lockdown, Lord. We pray that um we um we we be really patient and tolerant about this, Lord. And Lord, we pray that we can come back once again victorious, Lord. Lord, I pray that um for countries that are starting to rise up, Lord, like. Um, Chile or Mexico, Lord, we pray that they shall not rise up anymore. They shall we they shall stay like how they are now, and they shall go from zero cases and zero deaths. Countries that are in their peak, Lord, like India, India or um, India and um, Brazil, we pray that you shall bless those countries, Lord. Lord, we pray for the um, pe um the, for the time they're going through, Lord. We pray that as a as um as a country, Lord, all the people there should be safe, Lord. Lord, I pray that um, for countries that are starting to mellow down, Lord, we pray that you shall bless those countries, Lord, and they shall be safe, Lord. Lord, I also pray that this virus shall go away, all the lives that have been lost because of this, Lord. We pray that you shall bless every one of those families, Lord. Lord, I pray that once again this virus shall go away, this virus shall never come back, and 2020 shall be a blast. And thank you, Lord, that all of our St. Gabriel's community shall meet once again. Or for all the blessings you've given us. Amen. Amen. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul, worship His holy name. Sin like never before, oh my soul, I worship Your holy name. Yo 
so much for being with us this morning. Um, I really do hope it's been a blessing to you in some way. Uh, please contact us if we can support you in any way through this week and, um, and do, if you're able, join us immediately after this service on Zoom to catch up over a cup of coffee and cake or whatever it is you'd like to, to bring. I, uh, I do hope that Whatever Father's Day involves for you, if indeed that's anything at all, that it's a blessing for you. Have a wonderful week and we look forward to seeing you again soon. And this week we're sent on our way with The Grace, led by Vin, Michael and Nathan. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Higher than the mountains that I face, 
trial and the change. One thing.